Welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's breakout watch list. Each of the stocks that we talk about today um, will have breakout potential in the next coming week. They will be above their 200-day simple moving average, which itself is in an uptrend. Uh, we're looking at stocks with little overhead volume, uh, none ideally if they're about to make all-time highs. That's great. And stocks that are 150% off their 52-week low. So again, we're trying to um, find winning stocks that have pulled back a little bit, set up, and are ready to go again. Uh, we don't want to be buying stocks that are making all-time lows. Those will typically stay low. From last week's breakout watch list, we had a couple winners. Uh, Zillow was up 18.2%, and VTA up 11.2%, and DAR up 9.1%. If you guys are new to the channel, we do this breakout watch list every Sunday morning to prepare you for the rest of the week. On either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how the market's shaking out, we do a live stream called the Midweek Movers where uh, I kind of refresh this list and then also we'll take stocks from the comment section to, to look into. So um, more interactive there. And then on, Saturday, on Friday, I do a trading recap, just going through the stocks that I traded. Um, taking a look at the things that I did right, but also taking a look at the mistakes that I make. Because uh, if I'm going to be sharing my winners, I better be sharing my losing trades as well. And you learn a lot more from your losing trades. So if that's something that you're interested in, please uh, subscribe to the, the channel, Stock Tricks with Nick, and uh, follow me on Stock Twits, Twitter, and TikTok. If you guys enjoy the content today, please leave a like and let me know what stocks that you're also watching that I didn't cover today. All right, quick disclaimer, uh, trading stocks has uh, a lot of risk to it. Please do your own due diligence. Anything that we talk about today is just educational purposes. So here's the stock lineup that we'll be covering. Um, not going to go over each of these right now because we'll be uh, looking at the charts and the setups. Uh, the star stocks here are stocks that I currently have positions in, but uh, have not broken out from that range yet. So uh, still tradable, in my opinion. All right, let's jump to it. First, we have AMSC, and we'll just be going in alphabetical order, so uh, just to keep it simple. So uh, AMSC, you see the 200-day, 50-day, 20-day, 8-day exponential. Uh, that's all in the right order, so everything's trending up on the name. Uh, we're near all-time highs. Let me, before I say that, are we, no, we're not all time highs, but uh, relative time highs. Um, the price relativity compared to QQQ has been in an uptrend. You see on Wednesday when the rest of the market was selling off, uh, this did pull back uh, about 7%, but right to that eight day exponential moving average uh, that held as support. Uh, this tried to get going on Friday, but, but got squatted down. Um, so with this name, you can see volume during this pullback. So during the breakout, volume was heavy, exactly what you like to see. And then as it started trading sideways, pulling back, volume got nice and quiet. So not a lot of people are trying to escape the trade. Um, to take this trade, I would be looking at a break over uh, the previous highs here. That's 2050. Um, if for some reason this either pulls back or trades kind of sideways, uh, maybe later in the week we can get a tighter entry point, but for now, uh, looking at a break of 2050, that's the high of this uh, Wednesday candle. That's AMSC. Next we have ARAY. Uh, a little hesitant to put it on the list because the 200 days just starting to be in an uptrend, but um, we do have a high tight flag here, so 115% move since September. And then from the peak, we have a pullback of only 15%. So uh, nice and tight pullback. You can see the volume on that pullback after the extension, very light. Uh, average true range, still a little wide um, for my liking. Ideally, this comes in a little bit. But uh, since the peak, it peaked on November 24th. So that's giving a good amount of time for the 20-day simple moving average to catch up. Uh, maybe this trades a little bit sideways again. Um, but you're looking for a break over this diagonal. So depending on the day, uh, some, some place around uh, over 460. So it's a lighter, uh, lighter price stock. Not everyone's going to take a look at this, I know, um, but figured I would 
cover it. Ideally, this tightens up for the rest of the week and you have that 20 day simple moving average really coming in to provide support for a next break higher. That's A-R-A-Y. Next we have C-A-L-X, K-L-X. Um, this is one that I traded on this breakout and then we got the uh, vaccine news so that stopped me out of the rest of the trade. Since then it's been just kind of pulling back um, but not uh, not giving any warning signs of a uh, larger pullback there. Um, you see ATR was coming in nice and tight before this move higher. This one would have been a little bit tough to trade. Uh, I guess you could have done a break over the previous high on this guy, but probably would have been stopped out a couple days later. Um, but now this is really tightening up. You see volume, the lightest it's been on Friday. Um, and you have the 50, the 20, and the eight day exponential moving average all within uh, 5% there. So nice and tight range. And zooming out, this guy has been in a really strong uptrend. At one point it was up 360% from the 52 week lows. Uh, so two possible buy points. If we open lower on Monday, uh, you could use the high from Friday to come through as your as your buy point. So that would be 5504. Otherwise, a break over the high from 128 of 2563 is your buy point. That's C A L X. Next we have C D A Y. Um, you got that 250, and then the 8 and 20 are right together. So uh, nice tight range. Average true range coming down. Relative strength holding up fine. Um, one concern, so one strike against this chart is this large volume on a selling day. Uh, you see it did bounce off that 20 day simple moving average. So um, maybe I'm not sure exactly what the story with that pullback is, but it is something to note and a strike against the chart. So um, we're always trying to poke holes in our own ideas so we get more conviction when we find a setup that has the, the least amount of red flags. So that's just one strike. Um, zooming out, you can see we're, we're well above that 52 week low um, and things are getting tight through here. So uh, you could use this downward diagonal or basically just a break over um, these three highs. So 99, 54, uh, 99, 64, somewhere around there. Um, ideally, we get a big volume up day to, to break over this range and kind of negate this, this high selling volume day. But that's CDAY. Next we have CRNC, and I do have a position on this already bought in on Thursday. Um, I think this might have been a high type flag. Let's, yeah, so about a hundred percent move um, in eight weeks, and then the pullback from the high only 14%, so high type flags, 90% or more in eight weeks, pullback of less than 25%. Um, so that that manages that. Uh, bought it on Friday as it undercut all those previous lows except for uh, these these two lows. So anyone who got in on this kind of pullback buy and put their stop uh, right below the previous days, um, they probably got shaken out on Thursday when when we gapped lower. But with that gap down, it rallied, reclaimed the eight-day exponential moving average, and went over the previous day's high. That was my buy point. Uh, and then on Friday, we had higher highs, higher lows, and another close over the eight-day exponential moving average. Uh, but this one's not too far extended. So if we do open lower on Monday and then come through the high of Friday, that would be a buy point, 90.64. Um, otherwise, you could do a downward diagonal. And depending on the day, on Monday, that's going to be around 91.43. So really good potential with this one. Uh, one of the, the top stocks that I'll be watching, CRNC. Next we have CYH. This is another one um, that I took the trade on Friday. Uh, this was on a previous watch list as well because you do have a really strong move up here, 151% in just a couple, maybe two weeks of trading. Then you get that uh, VCP action where the pull, first pull down is 31% from high to low. Next one is going to be about 17%. And this third one here so far is 7%. So you get those each pullback lighter and lighter magnitude. Uh, the volume profile on this is exactly what you like to see. 
high volume coming out, low volume coming in. You get that nice large volume as it tried to uh, break out. Uh, got squatted with low volume and nice, nice and tight range. You could see average true range coming in. Relative strength holding up well as the rest of the market sold off on Wednesday. Um, so really nice potential with this one. Uh, you could use a break over Friday's high. That would be 865. I think I got in on a break over Thursday's high, 857 there. Um, otherwise, you have this kind of mini high here, 887 uh, to buy in on that guy. That's CYH, one that I own already and looking good so far. Nice and tight range. Uh, could get um, a tight stop on that. Next, we have HUBS, another one that I took on Thursday, uh, but hasn't broken out just yet. Uh, kind of the same idea with the CRNC trade where uh, really strong, you have 200 day, 50 day, 20 day, eight day, all in the right order. Um, really strong uptrend. And just the last couple of days, this has been pulling down, making a lot of newer lows. Gap down on Thursday, then rallied to uh, reclaim the eight day and move over the previous day's high. That was my buy point um, with a bullish engulfing candle right above the 20 day simple moving average. Then on Friday, uh, if you're not in the trade already, uh, inside candle on very light volume with the low of the day, just hovering above that eight day exponential moving average. So um, could buy basically a break over Friday's high, that would be 369.65 um, or a break over the, the all time high. So 401.66, 4319, 4319 uh, would be your buy point. So that's H-U-B-S. Next, we have IIPR, another one that had been on the watch list prior. Um, took the trade. You can see the green candle here. So um, zoom out a little bit. You got that 200 in an uptrend and then 50, 20 in the 8, all in the right order. Um, yeah, I tried to take uh, this trade over the break of some of the previous day's high. That squatted and then got stopped out the next day. Sideways action, had one shakeout here with a pullback. Uh, since then, it reclaimed it. And on StockTwits, I said, uh, had one, one of my alerts go off where we were breaking over the high from 11.23. But that was on that Wednesday day where, that Wednesday day, on Wednesday where everything was pulling back. So this also squatted. But on Thursday, hit that eight-day exponential moving average, moved higher, uh, closed right at the high of the day. And on Friday, we had higher highs, higher lows um, with same kind of volume, down basically a flat day. but um, Held, held that price uh, exactly what we were looking for. So uh, a break over the high from Wednesday, 164.42 would be a buy point. You kind of got a uh, possible double top, or yeah, right through there. So break over that is your, your buy point. Nice volume coming in on Wednesday. It's IIPR. Next we have IR, um, one that, I currently have a position in. Um, it might might stop me out of this, but the range is getting so tight here. So you can see average true range coming in. Uh, zooming out, this is an IPO. So um, the fact that we're getting this type of price acceptance up here is is kind of shocking, uh, but allows you to put a really tight stop on the trade that you you make. Um, ideally, we would have seen volume coming in instead of kind of picking up. In the in the tail here, um, but still a tight enough range where a break over some of these previous highs of 45.64, 45.58, so 45.64 uh, would be your buy point. You could kind of get a lower entry if you drew a diagonal down here, um, but the lower that you're buying into the uh, pullback, the higher probability that it, you you're going to take the the trade for a loss. But if it does work out, you have that nice low entry and you could get some multiples of your of your risk on that. So that's always the balance, right? You want high probability trade. You want good risk reward. Sometimes you have to uh, balance that with the trade. But this uh, this one's IR. Good one to just keep on your watch list. Set some alerts higher. Uh, see if it gets going. Next, we have LMB. This one is just going to be a pure pullback buy opportunity. Um, you got the 250, 28 all in the right order. Really strong move through here. What is this? 300%. Um, 
this would have been a nice Bible base, but I did not not see this one, but extended, pulled back to that eight-day exponential moving average, really light volume on that pullback, exactly what you like to see, extended on, that would have been Tuesday, on high volume. Wednesday, we had that, that squat day, so pulled back a little bit, but really, really light volume on that pullback to the eight-day exponential moving average. Um, so on, on this type of setup, you, you buy a break over the previous day's high. That just so happens to be 12.99, so a break over around number 13. Um, something something to watch for. Um, the number of kind of pullbacks that you buy, the higher that number goes, uh, the more likely it is to fail. So this first pullback buy would have been the, a higher probability. The second one, a little bit lower. Third pullbacks, I, I don't try and buy those. Same with the fourth. Um, but the second one could work. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to take the trade, but it was it was one to throw on the watch list just because it had that 300% move and is really um, acting right around that eight-day exponential moving average, right where it's coming up uh, in this upcoming week. PFSI. If you guys are enjoying the content, please leave a like. It really helps me out. And uh, comment any stocks that I did not put on this list that you think have breakout potential. Because if I'm helping you guys, I want you guys to help me too. Uh, this is PFSI. Uh, you can see we got the, well, we have the 50, 20, and the 8 all trading right in the same price range with the 200 day in a strong uptrend. Where are we off the lows? Up 400% off the 52 week lows. So that's great. Uh, I think this was 30% pullback, 27% pullback. So uh, honestly, not a too strong of a pullback here. We get this mini. Uh, rally. A lot of these highs were basically same price. That could have been a buyable break, um, but likely would have been stopped out. Um, hit that 20-day simple moving average. Things got nice and tight again. Volume is really consistent. Average true range coming in. Price relativity is holding up. Uh, where was that Wednesday bar? So on Wednesday, it actually made, uh, it was actually a green day for this stock. So great price relativity. Um, so with this name, you're just buying a break over this previous high. So 60.94. Uh, would be your your buy point right there. And then from there, rally to the high would be 11%. That's PFSI. Next, we have PGEN, P-G-E-N. Um, this is another pullback buy opportunity. Uh, 200 days just starting to get an uptrend, but you do have the 250.28. Um, the volume is exactly what we're looking for. A couple big volume days on up days and uh quiet on the pullback even this the one green day in this pullback had the most volume so that's constructive um ideally this this tightens up a little bit more um or maybe does kind of one move higher basically i, I want to get the 200 or the 20 day simple moving average coming up to to provide support get a little bit more time for price acceptance through this but um if you're just buying the Kind of diagonal, uh, you could buy that or a break over the previous high. Um, when a couple of these things don't match up exactly, I like to put half my position on when like it breaks over the previous day's high, and then another half when it breaks and kind of holds over the uh, diagonal. So if it's nearing the end of the day and we're above the diagonal entry point, that's when I'll put the other half of the trade on. Uh, just because I do want to get as low of an average price as I can, um, but I don't want to, I only want to put money in if, and I only want to hold money in, in a stock if it's starting to work for me. If I put half in with the break of the, the previous high, and then we just immediately flush, then it's only a half position that I'm getting stopped out on. Um, and that's, that's much better. So that's P-G-E-N. Uh, we got four more for you guys. R-E-G-I, almost probably could have taken this trade on Friday, but let me just back up here. Got that 200 and a strong uptrend. And then this has been trading sideways uh, kind of since October. So the 50, 20, and 8 are all right together. Let me... So two, two kind of ways to play this guy. Uh, you have this uh, diagonal with all the, the, the previous highs. You could have bought on a break over Thursday and Wednesday's high through here. Because this, um, this came out with some volume on that move closed near the high of the day. So that could have been a buy point around 6055. Um I didn't I didn't take that one, but um 
If we have any kind of pullback, then a break over Friday's high, 62.56 would be viable, um, or a break over that diagonal, which is around $63, 63.15 uh, right now. But with such a, a long range and uh, tight action after a, what kind of breakout was that? 175 plus percent breakout, uh, really strong stock, really strong setup. Definitely one to watch going into next week. Uh, next we have Shopify, S-H-O-P. This is kind of um, similar setup where this broke out uh, March to June and then has been just choppy since. Uh, but recently starting to look a little bit more viable. So I wanted to put this on because it's a, a larger name. I know I talk about a lot of small stocks, so wanted to throw at least one large name out there that you guys could, could take a look at. Um, but basically, we have another downward diagonal hitting four points, four highs right there. So um, looking for a break over that as a buy point, but you do get that kind of cup, mini handle, another kind of pullback. So again, this one's been trading nice and choppy, uh, really hard to get any size on, on the trade here. but if we break over uh, this resistance now after testing it four times, uh, that's likely going to be a good buy point. Uh, ATR, nice and tight. Volume's really quiet through here. Only up, only big volume day was this uh, nice green candle. So that's that's constructive. And you do have the 50 and the 20 right there, um, providing support. That's Shopify. Next we have STNE. This is kind of um, a flat top uh, breakout that you'd be looking at. So 250, 28 on the right order. Um, and this could have been viable on Friday, but uh, I, I didn't trade this on Friday, but you have all those previous highs uh, creating basically a flat top uh, of resistance. And on Friday, it broke over that and closed relatively close to the high of the day, but on, on lower volume. So this isn't considered a breakout just yet. Um, break over Friday's high would be a buy point. So that's 75.39. Uh, you have the eight day right there, uh, 20 day kind of provided support on Thursday and uh, looking looking good on this, this setup, STNE. And last but not least, we have TBK. Uh, 200 days just starting to get in an uptrend, but you have the 50 in a strong uptrend and the 20 and the 8 kind of together. Um, I think this might be a high tight flag. Let me check. Nope, just just a little short, 83% up. But then uh, nice tight action through here. You can see the average true range really coming in. Price relativity going up. Uh, that Wednesday SWAT day wasn't wasn't too bad and didn't come on high volume, so that's that's important to note. Um, this has been closing above the uh, eight and the twenty day simple moving average uh, the entire time uh, after it, it rallied through here. So uh, with this, just to break over the previous high here at forty nine forty two would be your buy point. So that is the breakout watch list for the week. Uh, again, if you enjoy the content, please leave a like, comment below what stocks that I missed and I should be checking out with the rest of my Sunday here. Um, and give me a follow on StockTwits, Twitter, and TikTok. Make sure you subscribe for more and I uh, hope you have a great week.